So let's review what we talked about in Unit 2. Unit 2 looked more at the principle of relativity and synchronizing clocks. So we started by looking at Maxwell's equations. These are equations that describe all of electrodynamics. They were put forth by Maxwell uh, around 1860, 1865. And one of the consequences of Maxwell's equations is a, a prediction that light travels at a, a speed, c, around 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And this speed is given in the equations without reference to any reference frame. The speed of light is just the speed of light. So physicists at the time assumed that light propagated through the ether this colorless, non-reactive medium, which is the thing that wiggled when light waves wiggle. There had to be something that carried the light waves. And so then the speed of light must be relative to the ether, just like the speed of sound would be relative to air. Michelson and Morley, in the late 1800s, conduct a series of experiments, very high precision measurements of the speed of light, and they fail to detect the presence of the ether. So here's the state of affairs in physics at the end of the 1800s. So there are these three statements. The principle of relativity, that the laws of physics are the same in all reference frames. Maxwell's equations, that's a law of physics, and that law of physics says that the speed of light is c. And then the Galilean transformations, which recall, say that um, velocity might be measured differently in different reference frames. And if velocity is measured differently in different reference frames, that's in conflict with this statement, which is a law of physics that says the speed of light is c. So these three statements cannot all be true at the same time. Most physicists thought at the time that Maxwell's equations needed some adjustment if you're moving relative to the ether. But Einstein took a different view, and he said that the Galilean transformation equations are wrong. That these two statements are correct, but Galileo is wrong. And in particular, time is not absolute. So the Galilean transformation equations are not correct. So um, the question is, how, what would we replace them with? What, you know, where do we go from here? And so Einstein says, all right, so Maxwell says that the speed of light is the same in all reference frames. That's what we know to be true. So let's use that to redefine or start redefining time. And so we come up with a way of saying whether or not two clocks are synchronized. We said that two clocks are synchronized in an inertial reference frame if they correctly measure the speed of light to be the speed of light. So this gives us a way to synchronize clocks by sending light beams around. One particular way to do that, this radar method idea, is um, that it's a way to determine the space-time coordinates of an event using just a single clock. So you might have a clock here. We shoot out a light beam, and it hits an object, reflects off of it, and comes back to this clock. And you can record the time that the light beam left and the time that the light beam came back. So the departure time will be TA, the return time is TB, and the event, that's um, the event of reflection, when the light beam hits this object. What are the space-time coordinates for that event? Well, they're given by this formula. And then lastly, an important thing we introduced in this unit were space-time diagrams. So these are really, really useful ways to visualize what's going on in special relativity, We'll use them in pretty much every unit from here on out. And um, here's the example that we worked through. You'll work through some for homework. And just a key thing to remember here is that it's just like an X versus T graph, except the T goes up now instead of in this direction. So this brings us to the end of unit two. In the next unit, we'll look even more closely at the nature of time. And one of the things we'll find is that coordinate time, time in a reference frame, is frame dependent. So what this means is that suppose there's some event in space-time. Anastasia, here at rest, might have some time value, might measure some time at which that event occurs. 
Beowulf in motion might measure that event as occurring at a different time. So it's the exact same physical occurrence, but Anastasia and Beowulf observers in two different reference frames would measure different times for the same event. So we'll explore that and unpack some of its consequences in the next unit. See you soon.